So um, now we can go ahead and uh, show what's going to happen next. Well, this molecule, uh, let's say we focus on this resonance structure. What could this resonance structure now do? Combine the Right. That's right, it combines with a non radical. Let's show the product that we get from that. What's the name of that step? And now this radical could go back and do another propagation, step one. But did you check whether we're forming a stereocenter? You always have to check for a stereocenter. Are we forming one here? Yes. Yeah. So really, we have two products, one in a wedge and one in a dash. However, instead of the bromines attacking this resonance structure, they could have attacked this resonance structure. Can we draw that? Yeah, let's draw that. What's the name of this step? It's, a, it's also propagation. Yeah, this is just an alternative propagation step too. We've seen that there can be alternative propagation steps depending on what isomers or what resonance structures are involved. But there's no um, stereo. Yeah, so that's right. So how many products did we get here? Just one. Okay, good. How many products did we get total from this allylic halogenation of the starting material? Um, so it depends on which. Uh, right. However, one remember that in the actual solution, all of these things are happening. Oh, okay, so remember, okay. there's really there's not just one of these molecules. There's billions of them. Yeah. Some of them, in some cases, this resonance structure will be attacked, and in some cases, this resonance structure will be attacked. So the total number of products would be. Three. That's right. This one. This one. And this one. Again, for allylic halogenation, we're not going to worry about trying to halogenate any of the non-allylic um, carbons. I, I, think, uh, I think you're only going to focus on allylic halogenation for bromine. Um, well, bromine is highly selective, so it's going to want to form only the stabilized allylic um, radicals. So we're not going to worry about attacking here. And it certainly doesn't attack the alkene. What was the role of the alkene then just to provide resonance stabilization? The role of the alkene was to provide resonance stabilization. So now here's something else you have to watch out for. Um, when you draw the radical intermediate, you have to ask if there's any other possible resonance structures. And if there are, you have to use those to get the other possible products. Now, th there's a complication here. I said that this initiation step wasn't 100% right. So let's go back and fix it. I think you can already see what the problem is. Um, because we've already learned the reaction that Br2 would do with an alkene. What have we learned that Br2 does with an alkene? It an addition reaction? Yeah, just that it does an addition reaction. Remember, it does an addition reaction with the cyclic bromonium intermediate. And actually, that would be the major product if you just add bromine. So how can we get this allylic halogenation to happen? That is, how can we get the radical reaction to happen instead of getting the addition reaction? Well, it turns out that the radical reaction is more likely if you um, just deliver a small dose of bromine at a time. So we need something that's just going to leak out a small amount of bromine at a time. Uh, and that's NBS that you might have seen in some things. So you can't just use molecular bromine. If you just dump in a bunch of molecular bromine, you'll just get an addition reaction where the bromine attacks the double bond and gives you the cyclic bromonium intermediate. Instead, we use NBS. And we should just think of this as a source of bromine radicals. So this step wasn't quite right. 
Uh, if I remember correctly, MBS looks like this. So here's the structure of MBS. Uh, I saw that the instructor used this structure in one of the, the quizzes, so I guess you're expected to be familiar with this. I don't know if you're expected to be able to draw it yourself, but you should be able to recognize it if your instructor uses it. So that's basically saying it reacts with bromine, but slowly, so that you can get the radical. We're basically saying this is going to deliver a slow, steady source of bromine radicals. In fact, what will happen here I suppose this is the initiation step that happens here. Every once in a while, one of these bromines dissociates um, to give us this. The N here stands for this nitrogen. This is n bromosuccinamide. n bromosuccinamide. The N stands for the nitrogen. The B stands for the bromo. And it turns out that the rest of this is succinamide for various reasons. So this is the true initiation step. Okay. Uh, so again, you want to make sure you fix your notes from what you had before. Um, we can't just use BR2. Um, and this is a source of confusion to students. Students don't know when should I do bromine addition to the double bond and when should I do allylic halogenation. Well, now we've learned. If you simply add Br2, you should just do an addition reaction to this double bond with the cyclic bromonium intermediate. But if you use NBS, that's when you get the allylic halogenation. You only need NBS for allylic halogenations when you have an alkene. We can just use Br2 for a halogenation of an alkane because there is no competing reaction. We don't we need to worry about this bromine adding to the double bond because there is no double bond. So again, it's easy to get confused among all these various reactions. If you want to do a radical substitution of an alkane, you can just use Br2 or Cl2 or F2. If you want to do a radical substitution allylic of an alkene, you need NBS. And if you want to do a halogenation that's an addition reaction, you would use Br2 to attack the double bond. Again, this doesn't attack the double bond, but Br2 would attack the double bond. All right. show initiation, propagation, and termination. Actually, we didn't bother doing termination because I got tired and I ran into space. That would be a good homework exercise. Why didn't I do the termination? Well, because termination isn't really as interesting. These are the main products. You don't need to do the termination steps to show the main products, but you need to know how to do termination steps because your instructor might ask. So that's something awesome. you can try on your own. Um, account for the formation of all the products. In this particular case, he wasn't focusing on the stereochemistry. You just drew it like this, but I've seen other problems where he did care about the stereochemistry. Um, he also, oh, it looks like he wants you to have memorized the structure of NBS. So there's the structure of NBS uh, on the board. And the major product is this for all the reasons that we discussed. Well, actually, these both um, really uh, not, these both, I don't think you're expected to know which of these is major. And he asked here which. Oh, you did ask which would be the major. Okay, fair enough. So yeah, this is major Y. Because it's on the uh, secondary. Yeah. Now notice that both of them come from when the bromine takes this hydrogen. Yeah. If the bromine takes this hydrogen, you get two resonance structures. Well, then the next bromine could attack the secondary radical, or it could attack this resonance structure. Uh, but I guess you're right. Um, which of these is the preferred resonance structure? 
Well, this is the preferred resonance structure because this radical is more st substituted. We didn't really talk about that, but you just figured it out. So I suppose this product would be more important than this one, even though they're both possible, because this is the preferred resonance structure. But we're definitely not going to be adding to these carbons over here, because they're not stabilized by resonance. Right.